Less than 71 is going to be the quadratic formula, which is going to be your best friend. Okay, up till now we've been completing the square. And some of you are getting really good at completing the square. And some of you are still struggling a little bit with completing the square. Those of you who struggle with completing the square aren't going to enjoy this one very much. We're going to complete the square on that expression. Okay, not impossible to do. There's going to be an actual homework problem like this. So, um, I don't know if this is on your sheet or not. It's the lesson. Okay, that's fine. Oh, well, just, I'll... I'm going to do it for you. I want this to be on your paper. So I want you to be able to fall back to be able to, if you can't do it by hand, by completing the square technique, you can always look back to your independent practice and redo it. So uh, when, when you get these problems in homework, which you will, try it, verify that it's right on your independent practice. Every step I put in here is a necessary step. Okay. What mathematicians did back in the old days before TV existed, and they didn't have, they had a whole lot of free time before Netflix, before phones, before Facebook, or whatever, the current social media that all the kids use because all the parents got on Facebook, right? And I know how it works. Yeah. Something becomes popular, parents get on there, all of a sudden it's not popular anymore, something else happens. Anyway, that's fine. But back before all this, all this distraction was in the world, what people did was they created things. They created mathematical techniques in math. They invented cars. They invented planes. They did all these inventions, right? TV came about, and now everybody watches TV. Nickname back in the 50s for TV was called the idiot box because people were being idiots sitting in front of their TV all day okay, instead of out there making new things. All right, so anyway, if you want to become rich, turn your TV off and um, do something productive in your life. But that's neither here nor there. So. Um, AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero has that quadratic structure, right? Something X squared plus something X plus something equals zero. Okay, now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a formula. So anytime a problem looks like that, our formula can be used to get the answer. So instead of having to go through the whole completing the square process every single time, whatever the answer to this thing is, is just a formula. We stick all the numbers into the formula and work it out, and we get our answer. It's a wonderful thing. Wonderful invention. I don't know who invented it. I wasn't around when the guy came up with the idea. That would have been interesting to derive the first guy. Yeah, the first guy, the first guy that came up with it was a smart guy. That'd be great. I want to say his name was Girolamo Cardano. That's pretty cool. Right? He came up with a cubic function similar to the quadratic equation. I he made that. And I think he did the quadratic one. I might be wrong though. I might be giving him credit for the credit's not due. But anyway, I know he came up with a cubic one x to the third power. That's even harder than the x to the second power. But anyway, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So if I'm completing the square on a structure of that type, the first priority is everything equals zero, right? Yep. And we're there. Second priority is I want 1x squared instead of ax squared, right? I don't want some number in front of x squared. So I'm going to divide everything by a. And I also want to move my constant to the other side. So I'm, I'm fine with you doing that. So if I, if I start off my very first step, divide everything by A and move C over A to the other side, the end result of that stuff is AX squared over A just becomes X squared plus B over AX. I can't reduce B over A because I don't know what either B or A is. And I'm moving C over A to the other side. I'm leaving a gap. And watch what I do here. I not only move C over A to the other side, I'm also going to gap right here. I have some inside information that putting a gap there is probably a good thing to do. It makes the, the expression a little bit nicer to look at it. All right? So that's what I expect your first step to look like. So when you're asked to do this by hand, that's what I expect to see. I expect to see that written on your paper. You divide everything by A, and your end result is simplify, rewrite, gap, gap, C over A goes the other side. And it becomes negative C over A, right? Next step, complete the square. Now, what I've always told you about completing the square when this is a fraction, you want to take half a fraction, you can either half the top or double the bottom. Those are my choices, right? What's half of B? I don't know either, right? So we're going to double the bottom here. So I'm going to do plus B over 2A squared. And on this side, I'm actually going to square it. So on top, B to the second power. On the bottom, 2 to the second power and A to the second power. I simply square everything. So b over 2a is half of b over a, again, double the bottom, squared, b squared, 2 squared, a squared. Okay, 
Okay, so again, just following the complete the square technique that we've been using here for like 20 lessons now. In order to add, the, add or subtract these fractions, I need the common denominator. The common denominator is simply going to be 4a squared, right? 4a squared, multiply this times 4a, and all of a sudden I got 4a squared, right? So let's see, look at our next line. The next line we're supposed to factor this is going to be a parenthesis squared. What goes in the parentheses? X plus B over 2A, B over 2A. X, square root of X squared, the plus sign for B over AX and the square root of B over 2A squared is just B over 2A. <coughs> On this side, if I add the like terms, or I should say add the fractions, 4A squared, 4A squared, common denominator, the bottom is just going to be 4A squared and the top is going to be B squared minus 4AC. All right, so I expect to see that on your paper for this process. Next step, we're supposed to square root both sides, right? So if I square root the left side, I'm just going to get x plus b over 2a. If I square root the right side, I'm going to get plus or minus the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. The bottom has an exact square root, the top doesn't. And be careful b squared minus 4ac is one whole expression, so that entire expression has to have a square root. You can't square root pieces of it. Square root of b squared is b, square root of 4 is 2. You can't do that. b squared minus 4ac goes all together, so the entire expression has to go under a square root symbol. It does not have a square root. But 4a squared on the bottom, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of a squared is a. Notice those are the same, right? And the final step is to get x equals. We do that by moving the b over 2a to this side. Since we have a common denominator, just put the common denominator in the bottom. Minus b goes in front of the plus or minus sign. And just like that, we have our quadratic formula. That formula solves every quadratic equation in existence. Every single time. Okay? Requirements of using this formula are the equation has to start off looking like this. Descending order equals zero. The coefficients of x squared, x, and constant are a, b, and c. And that's the a, b, and c happening down here. Okay, and that's called deriving the quadratic formula. So if it says, begin with ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero and derive the quadratic formula, that's what I expect to see on your paper. Places I've seen people mess up on this before. A lot of people want to put an x on this. Okay, B and A are acting like numbers, X is the variable X. So keep X out of this. That's just, a, if this said two-thirds X, you'd put one-third squared, right? If this said five X, you'd put five halves squared. If this said 10 X, you'd put five squared. You don't put the X in that step, right? A lot of people leave a plus or minus sign off. Okay. Um, really, most people get this under control after three or four lessons. So again, this should be on your paper. This is the exact correct answer to that question. There will be a test question which is going to say start with AX squared plus BFC equals zero and derive the product formula. That's the test question. That's the answer. On the study guide for that test, that problem will be on the study guide. That exact same problem will be on the test. Just a matter of going through the completing the square process correctly. Practice it well. And again, use this as a blueprint. So if you get stuck, look and see where you're stuck. Make sure that you make note of that and get unstuck. Next time, hopefully, you don't get stuck again. All right. When you get done, compare what you have on your paper to what it's supposed to look like and see if there's anything wrong with it. If there's anything wrong with it, that'll probably show up again in your work, so be watching for that next time you do it. Okay. Practice it, get good at it. But again, it's just completing the square process. You don't have to memorize the answer. Just apply the process correctly, and you'll get the correct work to get the correct answer.